YouTube, how you doing Earthlings? Uh, or anyone, anywhere, who happens to be listening on. Um, right, I wanted to show you what I've been doing. Let me just see if I can level this up a bit better. Oh, well, it's wonky like that. But anyway, um, it's still wonky, isn't it? Viewing. Right, um, I'll just get it and show you it. I've made myself a Kingdom of Heaven prop replica of the heater shield used by Orlando Bloom and the Knights of Ibelin. Um, basically, I had some sheet steel, which is um, 0.8 or 1 millimeter thick. I can't work out which one. I think it's about that. Well, we'll call it 0.9 um, sheet steel. Um, here's the, uh, the bit that I cut it out of. Basically, I um, well, as you can see, I I cut round this area with some tin snips, but I couldn't quite get the angle right around this bit. So I had to I had to cut this bit with some very small little cut off discs that I have which loads and loads of them broke so I've actually ordered myself an angle grinder finally um, but yeah it's wonderful stuff wonderful stuff really easy to use and bend up you can see I've got a nice curve on it um, these straps are from a camera um, camera straps which I sort of leather looked up and sort of made made a bit browny make them look a bit leathery I've kind of made it to my specifications because once you've got a gauntlet on there you won't be able to fit your hand underneath there but um, I'm, I'm going to make some that are a bit more adjustable I think so you can adjust these straps here and you can adjust this strap I'd like to have done it at a bit more of an angle because um, I feel that it's quite hard to get it up to sort of protect my chin, my neck and my face if I wanted to. But you know, it's lovely about here. And this this bit here, this is called the gige or gige. Uh, it's basically so you can have it around your back, ride about on your horse with it. And it's also quite good for when you're still when you're fighting and you want to go to your two-handed weapon and you go and you get back to your shield and someone's coming at you it's really really hard I've smashed this with a hammer I think you know my biggest hammer I've kind of made a tiny little dent there I think and I've got this great big great big knife that I kind of smashed into it really hard to try and make it a bit more sort of movie pop authentic I've got some splattered blood some smeared blood here and a bit of blood there and genuinely just really dirty um, and I'll show you why I've done it like that because well I'm like I said it's a kind of a movie replica I am still recording on oh, yeah um, I just want to show you this is my little folder I've got recently of my because I've been watching Medi I've been playing medieval 2 total war a lot recently I mean I've got a lot more recent total war games um, I've got Shogun 2 and Rome and uh, Napoleon and Empire but I can't play them because I can't get into my I mean, Steam account, so I want my money back for those games, please. Thank you very much. Right, here's me Iblin. I'll just go back with you, actually, and just show you. Uh, Crusade orders, I'm, all the orders, pretty much, of the all the, the knights. And these are the, sort of the main ones, really. Um, it's the House of Iblin. Uh, these are the, um, the prop replica. They're, these are the actual props, and you can see they're, they're about the right colour, I think. If anything, these are a little bit more dirtied up and scratched up. And there's the padding on the back as well. 
you can see there's a bit more height here as you be able to hold it up and protect your face and neck a little bit more. But anyway, that's what chain mail's for. And then there's loads of other people that have done prop replicas um, to varying levels of quality and there's loads and loads of different colours of the shields. These are people that have got the swords as well, I haven't got any swords, although I am going to attempt to make a sword, but yeah, anyway, I just love all of it. I want to get myself a, one of the little Norman helmets, so I'm from India, but I want to, I want to make, I want to sort of make a, um, a chain mail coif, I think it's called, with the man the head, but I want it with a thick padding inside as well, attached to the coif, and have it come round my face as well, so I'm going to do a strap here, I have it undo a ball from here, so you've got this, this bit hanging down, so you can then attach it up and tie it up, so all of this is really padded, and because in medieval pictures you have you have the face here showing, it doesn't sort of hang down and over around your neck here, and it, it you don't you don't wear it without a pa any padding, you just don't, you know, a, a, a blow against your head with just chainmail is going to kill you. You know, it's maybe if you have a sort of someone sort of pulling a knife but bashing it, you need something that's going to absorb impacts and it's going to have enough room for all the padding and the chain mail underneath, underneath the helmet. So you've got to, my head is um well with my with my hat on this particular hat I just measured it and it's about 22 inches so it's going to have to be 26 28 inches circumference. Right, I just want to go through my the method of of um. Making this, I, I kind of, I was kind of winging it as I was when, as I went along, really. Um, well, I cut out the shape uh, to begin with, and I added this padding on. This is just a piece of, um, uh, you know, one of those mats, camping mats. Um, these are some bolts I had left left over. They unfortunately, they're the Allen type bolts, so I had to fill these bits in with little bits of plaster, but that hasn't worked very well. So I might just ram some solder in there or something and then repaint over them. Because um, you can see some of the, the paints come off there where I've been weathering it. Um, yeah, so what I've done, I've, I've paid, I've, I um, PVA glued, wood glued some of this really sort of quite nice rustic sheeting that I had. I want to get something similar to this but I don't, quite, I don't know where to get it from really. Um, yeah, so I stuck that on the back and sort of cut round nicely. And then I thought, well, those, those, um, these seams and that, the edging look quite nice. So I'm going to stick some of them on man the outside. Um, and um, then, I, then I found out that yeah, it actually um, should have material on the front as well because the age of your painting and uh, and it just looks more realistic. So then I just stuck a bit on the front. And then cut around the edge. So actually, there's nothing that actually folds around the edge. Um, and, and this is actually start this this bit here peeled off a little bit. And you can see that it's not not really all the way around. You know, it's not sort of fold over. So the next one I'm going to do, I'm going to have a big piece on the front, then fold it over with about an inch around the other around the back, and then put another sheet on the back uh, of this material. But I tell you, it's 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 really light for what it is. It's only three pounds, and I've been reading up about people's wooden kite shield uh, heater shields. By the way, the, the term heater comes from um, they used to have. Uh, well, it's, that's not actually an old old term anyway. Heater shield, but it's it's the shape of an iron, and they used to have these irons, and they used to call them heaters. So hence heater shield. But it's actually called an eskew, I think, or. Oh, well, let me have a quick look. I can't remember what, what the uh, my es escutium escutium or rescue. It's a kind of a Latin name. Um, can't remember what it's supposed to mean, but um, yeah, you know, I, I really like it. It's a sort of a wall hanger, really. But I want to make. I want to make. Yeah, as you see, I've got another sheet here. I want to make a Templar um, kite shield with a rounded bottom because I don't think it's quite long enough for a kite shield. I might, I don't know, I'm gonna make a, a lot larger shield anyway. 
and it's yeah so um the weight is this is about this is just a minuscule amount over three pounds yeah and some people's wooden shields well they what they do is they, they get a sort of a a thick a piece of ply you know sort of a centimeter and then double it up so you've got that sort of thickness of plywood and that size i mean some of them are go i'll go up to six pounds i think i've read read and um, I think actually medieval shields were supposed to be quite heavy to make sure that the knight was quite strong and he gives some nice um, killing blows. Um, and they're anything up to 10, 10 pounds, I think, or they, uh, they've got to be over 10 pounds to be usable or something. But I, I, you know, I think the lighter the better. And I think this would be good for live action role playing. Um, Reenactments uh, and just general cosplay, really. But you know, like I say, it's going to definitely protect you. I reckon I could, I could deflect arrows off this quite easily. Um, they'd have a bit of a problem going through. You know, some bits around me flat. I don't know if anyone's seen any garbage. I've got BB-8 over there in. Waiting to be finished as a me I call this my shelf of shame, it's my shelf of unfinished product uh, unfinished projects. Um some of them are finished, some of them are just action figures, but but yeah, also yeah, I want to get a, a sword as well. Um or make a sword, but I don't think my my making of sword abilities are that gonna gonna be that great. I've got no forge, got no anvil, got no no way of well, I'm gonna ask I'm getting an angle grinder so I might be able to use some of this aluminium um aluminium stuff maybe. I was thinking of um using these two pieces. Um I've started to cut down one of them but I think that would be quite a nice width for a sword if I can find a way of removing I've already started cutting it, but I'm going to wait till I've got my angle grinder so I can cut it a bit more effectively. Um, yeah, I kind of like one of those cheap cosplay ones that are made out of fiberglass from other, but I don't think they look that great, so I might have to end up just buying a, buying a sword and then making my own scabbard without any leather. Yeah, so this is a uh, vegan friendly, this one I've made. Uh, I'm going to make all of my shields vegan friendly because um, according to Compare the Market there's 3.5 million vegans in the UK now which is 7% of the population so um, if you're putting anything other than fake leather on your shield then that's taking out 7% of the population of your, of, um, your potential buyers because I mean, you know, believe it or not Vegans actually like medieval stuff as well. It's quite, quite incredible. But, um, but anyway, hope you like the little video. Um, and I, I'm going to do some. I'm going to go through my stages of making my kite shield. I think uh, just so you can see what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. But I'm going to wait till I've got my angle grinder first. Um, anyway, take care. Have a good day and be lucky.